Here you are, Sergeant. That's the most recent I've got. How recent is that? Oh, it was taken about uh, two years ago. His hair's a bit longer now, but uh, otherwise he hasn't changed much. I agree, Mr. Body. It could be a complete waste of time. But he's a good-looking lad. He's on his way home from school. I mean, if you came down one morning and found he hadn't been to bed, note on the whole stand, that sort of thing, then, well, yes, we'd report him missing. He'd have him back in a week or two. Now, why shouldn't he have gone on the spree in Birmingham? Well, if he has, we'll have him back soon enough. I mean, would you rather we didn't search for him, though? I just don't want you to waste the time of a great many very busy officers. Well, I don't want to be gloomy, sir, but he was on his way home from school. He told his friend that he was going home. Now, why should he say that if it wasn't true? Now, why should he say it at all? Where else would he be going after school? Well, you may be right, sir. I hope you are. I'd just rather be on the safe side. Sandra, what reference number is that? Double B2, Professor. Right, let's have a look. Yes, N15. Nothing to suggest he might be dead, madam. Now, as to his movements, did he follow exactly the same routine from school every day? Not every day. Usually. Well, he took the shortest route home. And the most obvious one. Oh, yes. Yes, Peter is what's known as sybaritic, Inspector. That is, he, he believed... enjoyed it. his mother comforts. Yes. Enough to hurry home at half past four during the winter, certainly. There's no mystery about this route home. I mean, anyone that knew you or your son would know how and when he came home. Yes, most of our tradesmen and practically every master and boy in his school, I should think. See, this house is a bit off the beaten track. I'm surprised they didn't have a bicycle or even a motorcycle. It's a long walk. Oh, well, he was going to get a motorcycle for his birthday. You didn't uh, pick him up? He's nearly 17, Inspector. And he has got a bicycle. He's had a puncture for the last two months. Well, I'm certainly not going to mend it for him. He can't be bothered. It just sits there in the garage. No, I'm afraid not. BB3 from uh, Peter Bodley's hairbrush. Human hair, all but in colour, perfectly healthy bulb. It's in generally very good condition. It's a very fine texture. Then we come to... What is it, Sandra? I think it's BB4, isn't it? Yes. Oh, it's a degenerate bulb. Very poor condition. It looks to me as if it has fallen out. It's from the van. 
traces of a very coarse black dye, unevenly applied. You know, I'm beginning to think that this van was used to carry 15 different people all over Warwickshire. Don't they know who it belongs to? Yes, van was reported stolen in Birmingham three weeks ago. Oh, well, on we go. Well, I'd like to think he's been extremely happy. Tony wanted him to go to Ampleforth, his own old school, but Peter decided not, so no, it was. It's spoiled, perhaps. No reflection on you, but if he got his own way all the time... Uh... Well, only in important matters. He thought he'd learn more if he went to the local comprehensive school. Well, he was in a better position to judge, so that's what he did. Anyway, some of his friends were going there. In love, perhaps? He's about the right age. It's possible. He's certainly been moody from time to time. And they always are at that age. I know. I... It's my sergeant. I have a word with you, sir. Excuse me one moment. It's been tested for prints. It's quite clean. Oh, I mean, where did you... Uh... I posted last night, addressed to the police. Last night? It was gone four o'clock. I was addressed to you, sir, actually, but... Uh... Came by post late this morning. You weren't in. It's been sitting on your desk ever since, and I came in and opened it. No note. Inspector, I really would. Is that Peter's hair? Is it? This is uh, probably your son's hair. I regret to say, Mr. Bodley almost certainly cut off with a pair of scissors. I rather imagine that your son wore his hair fairly long. Not indecently, sir. Well, uh, someone seems to cut off most of the fringe. But I imagine he'd be able to move about without attracting public attention. Move about? In the event of his being a willing participant. Well, I don't think that's likely. It is a possibility to be considered, sir. It wasn't pulled out, Doctor. Oh, no. Any stains? Well, yes, there is certainly an unidentifiable smear on some of the ends where it's been cut. I say almost certainly it was from dirt on the scissors. What stains did you expect? Well, blood stains principally, sir. Unfortunately, there aren't any, so we don't need to worry. What about the paper it was wrapped in, sir? Oh, well, the few external marks are probably caused in the post. Well, I imagine he was wearing gloves all the time. <laughs> You ever tried sticking a stamp to an envelope with gloves on? Uh, whoever wrote this, sir, uh, Mr. Eyre, was trying to be exceedingly careful. Look, you see, the stamps were fixed on with water. I have tested them with saliva. The uh, address, sir? Well, I imagine it's going to graphologist, isn't it? The graphologist has a photograph, yes. Well, uh, I would say that it was almost certainly written with a ballpoint pen, you know, the sort of thing that you can buy for sixpence at any bookstore. And after about a dozen words, you find that it begins to clot. You know, the it's smudge, rather. Well, pending the graphologist's opinion, I would say that the writer was not very much at home with a pen and paper. The dots in the middle of the words indicate a certain amount of hesitation. And also, of course, he does know uh, Warwick. You see, he knows where Inspector Fleming lives, but he's not quite sure of the address. Well, doesn't that suggest that he's a stranger? Oh, to my mind, quite the contrary. No, I think a stranger would have taken the trouble to find out the correct address or would have contented himself by writing, quite simply, Police Station Warwick. But he knows more or less where it is. He knows me. I reckon he's been in trouble. You're too modest, Mr. Fleming. You're probably the best-known officer in the Midlands. I reckon he knows me. Well, this is all very fascinating, but if you haven't been able to deduce anything but that, I'd say you were all wasting your time. Uh, I'd rather you didn't leave yet, sir. Well, I think I ought to go home to my wife. I can't see I'm doing anything well, here. Well, there's still the note. We ought to discuss our next moves, don't you think? Note? But I understood there wasn't a note. I'm sorry, sir. I decided not to let you see it until we'd had a chance to investigate it ourselves. Then let me see it at once. Well, it wasn't actually addressed to you, sir. This is written by Peter. Although it was most probably written under duress, Mr. Bodley, the writing here is quite steady. Shows no signs of fear. I shouldn't take it too seriously, sir. Not at this stage. Not take it too seriously. 
not take it too seriously. He must be mad. I mean, you've seen it, can't you see? He must be mad. You can't still be cold. I am. Go to bed. I'll fetch you another blanket. No. Do as I say, boy. Go to bed. I don't want you getting ill. It'll be your fault if I do. It won't. I've looked after you properly. Oh, yes. Very properly. If I could trust you, you wouldn't have to wear it. That's your fault. So don't go blaming me. I'm very sorry, sir. You're not very well brought up, are you? If you mean my son, you'd learn a bit of respect by your age. Respect for you? Everyone deserves respect, boy. Everyone. Where are you going? To see your father. He'll kill you. He won't see me. I want to see if he does as he's told. The police will catch you. They're bound to. They won't even know I'm there. And if they do, you won't be so lucky. I shan't tell them where you are. Nobody will hear you. You'll likely starve to death. Neither of us would like that. How am I supposed to go to bed with this on? It's long enough. Keeps long enough. I've had it myself before you arrived, so I know. What if I want to go to the lavatory? Under the bed. I'll put it there for you. Cover it with a cloth after. I have to sleep in my clothes. It won't hurt you. Not for a couple of nights. You better be in bed when I come back. I'll be trouble. What if you don't come back? What if you have an accident? You better pray that I don't. You'll not be heard, so don't waste your breath. Did you mean what you said? What you made me write? Yes, I did. I'm not one to tell lies. Now, go to bed. No, sir, I don't want you to go. He's my son. I know that. But I'm conducting the investigation, and I must warn you, it would do nothing but harm. Go to the end of Mill Street, stand where he can be seen, and write the words, I agree in chalk, at the foot of the castle. Now, what harm is that going to do? If one of our men go, he knows where to go, what to look for. It's a large area to cover. I want time to get my men placed. Now, what do you think he'll do if he sees the place swarming with police? Nothing. It's too early in the game. Your son is in no danger, sir. No. He'll kill Peter if anything goes wrong. Now, what do you call that? I know what I'm doing. How many times a year do you have to handle a kidnapping, then? You're as much in the dark as I am. I, uh, I, I don't think he'd do anything yet, Mr. Bodler. But you'd agree that there's a risk? Oh, there's always a degree of risk. Then why not let me do as he asks? No, sir. The less you cooperate, the more you'd be forced out into the open. You must trust us, sir. What, then? Mr. Eyre will go in your stead.
I'm sorry, darling. I tried not to wake you. Oh. What's been going on? I heard a lot of cars. It's been a kidnapping. Oh, no. Superintendent Eyre and the father have been around here. Oh. Boy or a girl? Boy. 17-year-old. Anthony Bodley's son. Oh, poor man. What do they want? How much? I don't know. They haven't said. Not yet. Go to sleep, darling. I said no police. And there was a policeman in the square where Mr. Bodley was meant to be. Go on. There's a policeman. Write it down. There was a policeman. Peter, why aren't you writing? I'm not feeling very well. You're well enough to write this. Now you're behaving like a spoiled child. Now get out of bed and pick them up. Go on. Get out of bed and pick them up. Bloody write it yourself. I'll not have you swearing. Now get out of bed and pick up your book and pencil. When I was your age, I had to get up at half past six in the morning. Practicing for prison. And if I didn't, my dad used to pour a jug of cold water over me. You wouldn't want me to do that, would you? Write your own notes. I'm not feeling very well. You're well enough to get out of bed and pick up a book and pencil. Very well. If you cannot do as you're told, I'll have to make you. I'll count to three. You won't enjoy sitting in wet clothing all day. I told you I'm not well. One. I've got a fever. Two. You wouldn't dare. Three. I warned you. Now you better do as you're told. Take it easy, boy. Take it easy. I'm sorry I had to do that. Maybe it's taught you a lesson. Now perhaps you'll do as you're told. Where was it? There was a policeman in the square. Where Mr. Bodley was meant to be. I shall not give another chance. Mr. Bodley will walk on his own along the Snitterfield Road. Until he comes to a milk bottle lying in front of the war memorial. This contains another note, which he is to read immediately. Now the other note, Peter. What do you call him? Dad? Pa. Dear Pa, I'm perfectly all right, and they're treating me very well. Don't worry. You're to get 20,000 pounds in old banknotes. What did the other notes say? Some business about wrapping the money up in a parcel, taking a train from Warwick to Solihull, and then just throwing it out when I saw a marker by the tracks. What are you going to do? Well, 20,000 isn't much. I can afford it. And if we don't, they might end up by killing Peter. How do you think he is? Well, at least he was alive when he wrote that. That's something. Alive? But I never... Well, let's hope not. This has happened. If... 
If we do exactly what they say, if I take the money, what about the police? No, they'll be too busy following up the train theory. I've always heard it was safer. Telling the police was safer. Look, I honestly believe that Peter is in great danger unless we do as he says. Look, there'll be no risk to you. Just drive off to do some shopping, you keep going straight through the town, and then you dump the money when you see the signal. The police don't need to know. This page came from the same exercise book as the other notes. And I think we may safely assume that it was written with the same ball-pointed pen. Prince, Mr. Fleming, just the boy, sir. There are two things to be observed. Both the note and the uh, envelope have been at some time exceedingly damp. Rain? Uh, oh, no, no. It hasn't rained lately, has it? Damp from the milk bottle, sir. Ah, now that is a possible explanation for part of it. But you must remember that the note itself has been made damp by clean water, as far as I can see. But the envelope, this is where the milk bottle comes in, is stained on the outside. And it is stained again on the inside. Now, the note should be stained. Why isn't it? Well, it's a different uh, quality paper, sir. Is this uh, more resistant? Something else in the envelope, Professor. If this was folded inside another piece of paper. Precisely. Now, just wait a moment. Now, if you would just very kindly look through there. Eh? At the bottom of the page, where the light catches. Hmm? Now, it looks to me as though somebody had pressed exceedingly hard with a pen through another piece of paper. Paul. Please. <laughs> now, look, I photographed that. And here we have got your, your poll. Uh -huh. Okay? Now, on the, on the line above. O, T. O, T, yes, I think so. And along here, there's an N. It could be half an M. And above that, K, K E, E. E, e. 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 yeah. You sure it's Peter's writing, sir? Well, this is the third or fourth page from the book, and none of the other pages show any sign of indentation. Oh, it's a page from his exercise book. It could be the end of an essay. <laughs> no, none of the other pages show any sign of indentation. Why did he press harder, and why only towards the end? Because, in my opinion, it was only when he reached the end of the message that he suddenly realized the need to give us a warning. And this was folded inside another piece of paper? It could have been. Another note for the father, this one for us. Uh, uh, look, Fleming, suppose you try, uh, keep this note and give the other one to the uh, police. You see? Keep this note and police. Uh, it fits rather well, I think. But I was uh, watching everything that Bodley did, sir. Well, surely it wouldn't be too difficult to double up a piece of paper into his pocket. I imagine he was standing with his back to you some of the time. Yes, Doctor, it's clever. He um, frightens the father first, and then he warns him to keep the police away. Then he sends him to pick up the instructions for delivery. He gives him two notes. The first for himself, the second for us. Now, the boy only realizes there's going to be a second note as he gets to the end of writing the first one. So he tries to warn us. He's a bright lad. 24-hour surveillance, sir, for Mr. and Mrs. Bodley. Yes, Mr. Fleming. Peter, do you like some coffee? Are you all right?
You better get up and put up some dry things. Get a doctor. Oh, come on. Get up. You put up some dry things. Come on. Get up. It's about the stove and get warm. I need a doctor. Just do as a note says, sir. Get on the train and don't worry. It's quite possible that someone may come up to you and ask for the parcel. If that happens, give up the parcel and relax. Superintendent Air will be in the next compartment and there'll be half a dozen other men within reach. And what about the markers? We've had the track checked over its entire length, sir. An hour ago, there weren't any. If someone places them now, we'll see him do it. And what about Peter? Sergeant Ash will be here to answer the telephone, and there'll be a car standing by, sir. All right. Let's go. to get you some medicine, so don't get up. I've turned up the stove, so it'll be warm. I'll be back in an hour or two. Do you want to go home? Not particularly. I haven't got very much to do at home. Might as well get on and file. Mine? No. The professor's. Oh. Sandra? Hmm? How would you like a couple of weeks off next month? Off? Oh, holiday. But I was going in the summer. No, I mean extra. I'm taking John off for a couple of weeks then. He hasn't said anything to me. He doesn't know. Useless. Not entirely, sir. You've obviously scared him off. What's uh, Mrs. Bartley been doing this afternoon, sir? How on earth should I know? We thought you might have discussed it. No, we haven't. 
We thought you might have had two sets of instructions. Two? One for you and one for us. I didn't. So we followed Mrs. Bartley when she went out. What have you done? If you scare him, if he does anything to Peter... Now, nothing's going to happen, sir. If we see him, we'll follow him. All I want to find out is where your son is. Once he's safe, we'll pick up Chummy. What else could I have done? Do you believe him? Chief Superintendent Air, please. Fleming. That's Fleming, sir. Mrs. Bodley brought a note back with her. Shall I read it? Dear Mrs. Bodley, your son will be returned to you in due course. I do not want to move him away from here yet, as he has the flu. As soon as he is better, I shall send him home, so don't worry. Nobody's blaming you, sir. Perfectly understandable thing to do. No harm's been done. We'll find out where your boy's being kept soon enough. If he's not dead already. Now, the man called at a chemist's shop on his way through Warwick. He bought some medicine for someone he claimed was his son. He said he had flu. He wouldn't be buying medicines for him if he was already dead now, would he? Even if you do find him, how are you going to get him out alive? We'll deal with that one when we get to it, sir. Yes. Uh, where? That's all right, I'll tell him. We've got him to the house about three miles off the Snitterfield Road. Right, Mr. Fleming will bring Mrs. Budley with him, sir. A nurse! I'm not having a man in here! If a man passes the end of that van, I'll shoot him! Send a nurse! A girl, a woman! Ask her. If she says no, try the hospital. See if you can find a volunteer. Did he say what was wrong, Sergeant? Some kind of bronchitis, ma'am. Why won't he see a doctor? And Mrs. Hardy is a doctor. No, I, I mean an ordinary doctor. One of us goes instead. They wouldn't want that. He thinks a woman's safer. Oh, what's the point? Well, he'll have to come out soon enough, anyhow. Yes, but in the meantime, Peter isn't getting... If a... Mrs. Hardy goes in there, there's a good chance she'll talk him into coming out on his own. But will she do it? It's a lot to ask. I know I wouldn't let Judy go if it was me to choose. All right. Do you know who he is? Hubert Innes, Professor. He's got no criminal record, but he does have a history of mental disturbance. He's been hospitalized twice, three months and eight months, in 1953 and 1960. He lives on his own. His father died about three years ago. He's lived on his own ever since. And he has a shotgun. Yes, sir. You coming, John? Ash is taking some men along the hedge around the back of the house. There are a couple of sheds there. They may be able to get in through them. Now you come with me, Doctor. If we keep our heads down, we'll be covered by the van. Don't worry. It's a terrible thing to ask, Doctor. Oh, I'll be all right. You'd better be.
What are you doing here, Professor? I am with my wife. Where the hell's Ash? She ought to be in the house by now. I think he's got flu, nurse. Tell them the back's all shut. My dad lived there. I shut it up. He has pneumonia, Mr. Innes. How do you know my name? Police told me. He'll have to go to hospital. If he doesn't, you'll have his death on your coat. I don't care what. He's not leaving here. He has a temperature of 104. If he doesn't go to hospital soon, there won't be any point in keeping him here anyway. He'll be dead. They told you to say that. I'm giving him a shot of a fairly potent antibiotic. It may bring his fever down. It won't do anything about getting the liquid out of his lungs. If he dies, I have you. But what good is that going to do? You'll have to let me go. No, they won't. And they did in Canada. Let them go. Let them go to Cuba. Do you want to go to Cuba? Get back! Of course I don't. Safe conduct. I've got the money now. I'll go abroad. Isle of Man, somewhere like that. It's not your money. It is! He gave it to me. Why then? Why the Bodleys? Why not? They're rich. They won't miss it. What did they ever have to do with you? Nothing. I looked. They got a big house. I didn't want a kid. I thought that'd be bad. But killing Peter won't be. Killing? I'm not killing. If he doesn't go to hospital, you Well, you're the doctor. That's your job. I didn't make him ill. Shh. Just you be careful. I need some water. All I want is to be left alone. If you go, that's all. They won't. This time? They never do. Days I can keep going. Weeks if need be. Without sleeping? I'll tie you both up. I mean, they'll come in when you're, when you're asleep. They won't know. I'll stay. You let the boy go to hospital, and I'll stay in his place. You must think I'm daft. We've got Sergeant Ash and a couple of men down there, but he's nailed up all the windows on the ground floor. If we start breaking in, he'll start shooting. What about Peter? 
My wife is with him. She's a good doctor. But with any luck, she'll talk innocent of seeing how hopeless it is. Give him 10, 15 minutes, he'll come out of there as good as gold. But he's obviously mad, quite unpredictable. Now he's got two hostages in there. Let him do it his way, sir. There's less risk. I promise you, if this boy isn't in an oxygen tent in half an hour, you'll have his death on your conscience. If he needs oxygen, he can have it here. It's impossible. I don't see why. You can come to the door. You can go down and collect it. You know what to do. Can I speak to my husband? Who's he? He's a doctor, too. He'll know what to get. Is that a policeman? Not a policeman. I'll tell him. Well, he may not believe you. Why? I don't tell lies. He knows that. All my husband knows, Mr. Innes, is that I'm locked in here with a sick boy and a dangerous criminal armed with a shotgun. I'm not a criminal! You're wrong. You're like them out there. All right. If he doesn't come too near. Can I speak to my husband? Is the boy. He has acute bronchial pneumonia of both lungs. He has a fever, temperature of 105. He appears to be in a coma. He's badly in need of oxygen. Will Mr. Innes let him out? No. He says you ought to bring oxygen to the front door. We have already sent for an ambulance. How long? Ten minutes. I think you should come in and get him. I'll shoot anyone who comes any closer. I don't think this is quite the place for you, Professor. Rubbish. <laughs> if they come in here, you're the first person to get it. If they don't come in here, you'll be a murderer. That's useful. Contact Sergeant Ash. Bring him down on the right-hand side of the house. If she's that worried, we'd better do as she says. What do you propose to do now? Hang on a minute. You wait here, Professor. I don't want you getting on my feet. Joe happens to be in there. No. I didn't mean it to be her. Shall I take him away, sir? Not quite yet. Yeah, come on. Uh, carry the boy downstairs to the ambulance. Give him oxygen quickly. Put the stretcher down there. Gunshot wounds on the 
Legs. Lower trunk. Come on. Now, careful, will you? Maybe spinal damage. What does it mean, John? I don't know. Right, everybody outside. Not you, Ash. Shut the door. During my examination of Innes, I also noted heavy bruising across the rib cage. There were a number of minor abrasions and contusions possibly resulting from the struggle to arrest him. But this bruising could not, in my opinion, have been caused in such a struggle. The regularity with which he appeared to have been hit suggests to my mind that he was subjected to beating subsequent to his apprehension.